Some of all the sooner the ones you can't go for. But we bless God. Come on, son of God. We get ready to go to the prayer of our God and sing a, a, a song from tonight. And after we sing the song, we're going to dive deep into the word of God. That's the thing I want to share. I have, I have to share with you on the night uh, to help you with some things. And hopefully it, uh, you can receive all that the Spirit is saying and, 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 and that you all can be blessed and help hope from this. Come on, we're to shout hallelujah to the
make that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We are so thankful, Heavenly Father, just again, that you have blessed us and allowed us a, another blessed opportunity 
to come into the temple on your eve of the Sabbath. And most certainly, we ask you to look upon our hearts and upon our mind as your servant, as the prophet, come with the good news to share with thou peoples. We thank you just so much for your grace and your mercy. And most of all, for your long suffering that you have with your people, Israel. Thank you. We ask you to let us receive the word of God on this afternoon because it's coming from the third heaven down here as you gave it unto the apostle Paul. You let him see into the mystery into the third heaven in this our brother. He's one that lay before you and have a listening ear to receive the word of God from you. The very sword that you have given us. We want our faith to be, as you said in your word, to prosper and be in health, even as their soul shall prosper. We don't want to be a lean on one side and a little heavy on the other, but we want it to be together. Thank you for the reader. Continue to strengthen him. Most of all, we thank you for the woman that anointed the feet of our living Savior. Bless us and strengthen us even more in your son, Emmanuel the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands toward the heaven and give God a shout of hallelujah, saints. Truly, we bless him for you on tonight. So grateful and thankful for the presence of God, for all of the saints, my brethren, to the mothers, the daughters, the sisters, to all that are in that place, and to all of our wonderful sisters and brothers that are viewing us on tonight. Truly, we thank God for you. We greet you. Shabbat Shalom. Happy Sabbath to you. Peace of God over all, in other words. Listen, we're just excited about it, and I know we're pressed on time on tonight, but I do have some things that I have to share on tonight directly from God Almighty through the Spirit of God on tonight. Uh, you know, I've been always praying, as I tell you, and, you know, uh, a word in season. The Bible said, how good is it? And some of you guys, especially those of you in the viewers and those that are here, you're looking at the papers and uh, the topics of the message. And one of them is a little bit strange there. Uh, and some probably wonder why I wrote that on there. And I just wrote it just what I felt on today. I want to talk from just what I heard this week. From in dreams and visions, from walking and everything that the Spirit have communicated with me this week. It's been a long week leading into this week that with the holiday in it as far as I'm concerned. And I want to talk about that a little bit on tonight. Uh, I want to talk basically first part of the lesson on I wonder how God feels. And even me sometimes wondering, and then God knows he told me to write that, write that topic, and I want you to know, I want you to think on that. I wonder how do God feel? Well, what are you talking about? How do he feel about what? Let me, let me, let me, let me show you what he said to me, saints. I, when, I look at, when I look at the world, how they always, and I'm talking, I want to talk just to the Christians and to the saints here on the night. And it make no difference to all of our Christian brothers that view us, whether you say that you are of the seed of Israel or not, it don't make no difference. If you believe in God the Father and God the Son, wherever state you are, whatever your beliefs are, if you believe in the Bible, as the brother was talking a minute ago, listen, I want to talk directly to you on tonight. On, I wonder how God feels. I see people blow up these holidays, and when I say blow them up, they blow them up. They go all out of the way. People travel and come from far and near for all of these holidays. And just so happen, as it relates to this one, don't have nothing to do with me, but for some of you all that have been liberated and made free by it, it's good. 
but especially unto the pagan ones. I don't get into, not at all, not at all do I get into. And I wonder how God feels, and this is what he asked me today. How do you think I feel? So I ask you that. How do God feel? God has given us seven annual holy days. And listen, they deal with, and listen, again, I'm talking to all of the saints of the Most High, whether you know who you are of Israel, whether you're a Christian, whether whatever day you go to church on. Your only way in the kingdom of God, and it don't make no difference who you are, is through God's seven annual holy days that he's given you. Don't make no difference, saints. Your only way, your only access to anybody and to the kingdom of God is through his annual holy days that he's given us, not holidays. And the sad part of it is, most of the people don't know whether there even be a holy day outside of Pentecost. Here the Passover, but there's so many other ones that go along with that. But all of the holidays, the people can name them. Well, Brother Mark, give me Mark Matthew 6, and let's get that one out of the way, 6 and 32. But Brother Mark, are you saying, Keisha, I need that up there on that screen because I'm not going to turn my Bible. Are you saying that we can't keep the, 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 the holiday? No, I didn't say that. My recommendation, if they're pagan, don't do it. And again, if this one has made you free or whatever it is, but the whole thing of it is, if you trust in God and God is the head of your life, like you say he is, the day that he's commanded for you to set, to keep, you all to know about them. And no, I'm not saying that you can't celebrate the 4th of July, but if I'm going to celebrate this seven month, I'm going to celebrate some things that God told me to celebrate in his seven months just as well. Right. I want to show you what I'm talking about. And I'm not saying that. That would be saying that, read, read that text and I'll make, a, make the point Matthew on what I'm saying. Matthew 6 and verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Who seek after these things? The, the Gentiles. And you go back and you read that and they're going to show you. There's a group of people, and it don't have nothing to do about saved and unsaved. Gentile don't mean whether you're saved. These are a group of people that live on the face of the earth. They come from Noah, one of Noah's son, when the earth was repopulated. So they seek after certain things. But read on. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added now, unto that's you. That's my recommendation to you tonight. And I'm not telling you that you can't keep them. That'd be just like me telling a person, well, don't go to college. Just see God and he's going to give you everything. Now, my recommend, my, as priest of the Most High God, you can go wherever you want to go. College and whatever uh, uh, thing and get all the doctrine and degree that you can get. If you don't have Matthew 6 and 33 in your heart and in your mind, I have your mind set up that way. The Bible says, only the blessing of the Lord make it one rich, and with it, it, he adds no sorrow to it. I've seen people with money, and it can't do anything with them. But I've seen people with the kingdom of God, and it can give them everything. And that's what I'm saying, saints. Again, I'm not coming against holiday, but as priest of the Most High God, I want to help you. I want to let you know how God feels. Let me show you what I'm talking about. For those of that's, that, that, that's, go ahead and finish that. Give me the other one. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Uh -huh. Sufficient unto the day is the evil. God's going to take care of it, in other words. Now, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about with this. Do you know that the average 15-year-old can't recite to you two, let's know three of the commandments of God? Ask the average 15 year old, recite, tell me, nine, say three of the commandments. Say two of them. <laughs> and that's, what, that's how this world has gotten. The average 15 year old and down, seven year old, one of the first things that we learned as a child, probably when we first could learn, before we could read, before we could even read, we learned the Ten Commandments. We, they were, we, they were recited. We learned Psalms 23. All of this stuff comes from Sunday school. And now that knowledge has been increased in these last days, I wonder how God feels. 
The average seven-year-old, the average seven-year-old can name every holiday, beginning with Christmas, that's pagan. But the, the average 15-year-old can't name or recite three of the commandments of God. And I want to show you how important these commandments are. They're your life, they're your wisdom, they are your everything. And the average 15-year-old is almost like when they were asking about the Holy Spirit. They hadn't been so much rather heard whether there be a commandment or not. And I'm not promoting and trying to do whatever church you're in. If it's Sunday, whenever you I pray to God that you're getting some things to help you. I haven't forgot the thing that I've learned in Sunday school. I didn't stay at that level. I'm at a point where right now I am priest of the Most High God. And I told you this on last Sabbath. I'm spiritual, but do you think, and I'm at a good place in life right now. As Hezekiah said, in the prime of my life, I feel, I maybe hadn't quite made it that way, but I'm at a good place. I don't want for nothing. God has blessed me with spiritual understanding, spiritual discernment, to be able to see things spiritual, to be able to hear things. What else in life do you think I could want for saints? It ain't nothing else. And when I tell you it ain't nothing, it ain't, I could care less about the cares of this world. And God in heaven knows that's the truth. Some of the things that I've had and have, I've had people, and I'm just going to talk for a minute. It's going to be sound a little foolish. I had a brand new Harley Davidson motorcycle, the, the, one of the better ones you can buy. And you know how people told me I was a fool? And some said, you the damn fool. You gave away or sold a brand new motor. I could care less. You know what I did with it? I took the money and put that $35,000 on building this church. And I didn't have to ask the saints for nothing. I didn't have to cook fish. I didn't have to have cake walk. I didn't have to do none of that foolishness. And when I say he richly blessed me, so I could care less about any of that. Women, I could care. That's you. Listen. That's my, some, and I, not to any of you all and not to no woman, but some nappy head woman, I could care less about getting myself tied up into something like that. And I'm going to, and like I said, I'm going to talk fully for just a minute because I want to show you the way the world is. As an older brother that we grew up, I soon have a glass of wine any day, most evening, than the food with some foolishness. But getting back to what I was saying, the average child, this is what the Spirit told me. That's 15 years old now. Can't recite three of the Ten Commandments to you. What are they getting in churches? As, but as it relates to the holiday, they can name pretty much every one of them. God's holy days, and it's just like the adults, hadn't so much as heard of them. And I wonder, again, I wonder how God feels about those things. For those of you all that have grandchildren, go to the house and put them to the test. And you all to critique yourself when you find out that they can't recite three of the commandments to you. They know a whole lot of other things. We got some of them now that are young. Stacy keep little children, little boys just reading. And, and had even made it to maybe in kindergarten, I guess. <laughs> but the Bible said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and I'm going to give you everything that you need to make it in life. I give you perfect health, I give you strength, I give you husband, I give you wife, and I, and I see this. I saw it with David. God told David, I've given you the king palace, I've given you wives, I've given you this, and I've given you that. And David, if you wanted anything else, all you had to do was that. You are my son. You're the apple of my eye. You're the one after my own heart. I would have given you much more. Now, we're at a place again. The average four-year-old a five-year-old, I give them five. 
The average five-year-old know all about Fourth of July. You know why? Because you all have put an everlasting stamp in their mind from when they first started it. You bought them all the fireworks, you bought them this, and you bought them that. And you put an everlasting stamp in their mind to where they can't forget it. 33 says again, but the things that's going to help produce life and keep life in them and keep them in the way that's going to be their wisdom and their understanding, lift in their life. Let me, let me say it this way. This is what Solomon said. The thing that's going to make you be able to lay down and enjoy and sleep at night knowing all the surety that my child is well, you didn't put that in them. But when you didn't put that in them, the Bible says, the thing that you, when you didn't put in them, it'll have you up all night long. It'll have you crying all the night. That they was born for that foolishness. And I'm going to be nice and not quote the scripture tonight on what it says about them. All because you didn't put something in them. And I wonder how God feel about it. I can, I can easily answer that because he told me this week, and I knew before he told me this week to come and talk to you all about it. So again, this is to all. I don't have anything. I'm going to talk just for a few minutes against this one here. For all that's liberated, for all that have helped make the United States great again, and whatever you are, Republican, Democrat, or whatever you are, I pray God mercy on your soul. All right? Because he's watching some things. All right? And I'm going to show you some things Tonight in scripture, just a little bit, and I'm going to jump and get into some other things to show you where you should be at. Bless you, brother. Let me have what I got so I can get out of here. Bless you. All right. So keep me with what I got right there first. Let's start this in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. And see, these are the only thing, like, like I said again, and it don't make no difference who you are, what day you go to church. And I can prove these things tonight, saints. The only way that any of you guys are going to make it into God's kingdom is going to be by learning these seven annual holy days and agreeing to God that you're going to keep them. That's going to be the only way. If not, you won't get in. And it don't make no difference who you are, saints. Let's read it, brother, quickly. Leviticus 23 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. How can you proclaim something that you don't know about? How many of you have ever been to the doctor, had a doctor's appointment? The only way that you can proclaim that doctor's appointment, they had to give it to you first. You can't just go in there and make your own appointment, even though some of you probably try and you see it don't work. Likewise with the feast of the Lord. Read him, brother. To be holy convocation. Even these are my feasts. Who do they belong to? The Lord. They are here, saints. And we, we say that we are sons and daughters. Come on, read it quickly. Six days shall work be done. Go on into chapter 4. Uh, chapter 4. Chapter verse 4. Verse 4. Yeah. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. What are they, Marquette? Holy convocations. Now, if they're holy convocations, holy together, they're not holiday, but they're holy convocations. Holy. Why don't the people know about them? Now, let's know these, Sister Brown, again. Ask the every 15, go try your grandchildren and see if they can name you or recite to you. Three of the commandments of God. And if they can't do three of the commandments, I know they can't do not one of the holy days. Your grandson know. Huh? Your grandson know. He do know him? He, Mason, how old is he? He only three. Come here, Mason. Prove these people. <laughs> now stay back there. Hey, food, no, no, no. He ain't going to embarrass me tonight ever again. <laughs> Get up here, come bring it out. Bust out. First thing you're going to bust out is Spider Man. What's he like? <laughs> Spider Man. Bust out that Spider-Man thing running behind. Uh-uh. Just stay on back the way. Yeah. <laughs> been bad for me. Let him do it with his grandma. <laughs> Listen here. Let me show you something. Satan always have a counterfeit to kind of offset a, a try to offset or throw the things of God off. Now come on down to the seven month there, verse number. Okay. Uh, I need the seven month there, brother. And the sister, verse number 23. Now listen, 
it's seven the, months here in, in the man's time, in the 4th of July, everybody look for it. Now, to all of the saints that have any understanding on everything, I was telling Sister Brown and telling his mother, I said, do you know what the seven months to be here before we know it? Time again, by all we got is about three months, two and a half, three months, and we're going to be in the seven month. What's the, what happened on the seven month, the first day of the month? Come on, people. In the seven, uh, what happened on the seven month, on the first day of the month, preach, uh, Bible study group of Israel? Trumpet. On the seven month, the tenth day of the month. I told me, on the seven month, the fifteenth day until the twenty-first day. And then the last great day. So saints, this is the way it is. You're supposed to know it. Know it by heart. Look at that. Give me that verse 23. 24. Speak unto the, mm -hmm. speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire now, to the Lord. this is it, saint. Now listen, let me show you. Go to Zechariah 14 for just a minute. I know we offer our paper what we got. But listen, for all that don't keep this, saints, you won't make it into God's kingdom unless you agree to keep his ways. Verse 16, sir. Zechariah 14, and then do verse number 1 and show you what when this time is here. The day of the Lord, this is when Christ's second come and read it. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst now, of this thee. This is at his second come. Read verse number three. How do you know, Brother Mark? Listen, the Bible said, why, in Acts 1, why stand ye gazing in the sky? This same Savior that left up, he coming back in like manner. Where did he leave? He left the Mount of Olives. Read it. Verse number three says, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. Mm -hmm. And his feet shall stand in that day mm -hmm. upon the Mount of Olives. Where are the feet going to stand? On the Mount of Olives. The same place his feet left, saints. It's coming right back to that same place. Yes, sir. And if you in heaven... He down here on the earth. It's going to be a whole bad, bad miscommunication there. Read it. And which is before Jerusalem on the east. In the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east. Come on down to verse number five. Let, go, let me show you what will happen when he come back to that land. That's why we're supposed to be over there waiting on him. Read it. Verse and ye five. shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Somebody had my mm -hmm. pen. Yeah, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Zion, king. king of Judah. The Lord my God shall come. Christ is making, he's going to make his second return. And look who's going to get to be with him. And all the saints with thee. At his second coming, saint. This is the day of the Lord. He's going to come and all of the saints are going to be with him. He coming down on Mount Sinai, the same Mount Zion, the Mount all the Mount of all the same place he left. Look at verse number nine. Let's see what he gonna be at that time. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. How much of his son? All the earth. Not just not just in one place. He gonna be king over all the all earth. All the earth. Uh huh. In that day shall there be one Lord in His name. You don't one. have to be worried about Jesus, Emmanuel, Lord Christ, Jehovah, Yahshua. You don't have to uh, Yahshua. You don't have to be worried about all of those things at that time. He's going to be one, and his name is going to be one. You can rest assured that one. Come on down uh, to 16. verse number 16. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. Now, this is at his second coming. Remember that? It's going to come to pass for all of the people that's left that didn't make it in the first re resurrection. Read him. That shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacle. <laughs> we got to do what now? Keep the feast of and tabernacle. And this is in the seventh month. So you mean to tell me the only way that you're going to make it in the God's kingdom according to Zechariah, and I can read it in other places, is you're going to have to go up and keep the feast of of tabernacle, what God had been trying to get you to do from Brother Mark's teaching for all of these years. He haven't changed anything, saints. No, sir. Revelation 22. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. He's coming back again. Now, he just told you he's coming and all the saints going to be with him and he's coming to Mount Zion. Uh, uh, Mount of Olives. Get that Mount Zion out of me there. Verse number 12. Listen to what John said in Revelation. He's coming 
And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. What you say, Emmanuel, the anointed one? My reward is with now, me. Now, what he said the first part? Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me uh -huh. to give every man according as his work shall be. Mm -hmm. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Uh -huh. Bless all they that do his commandments. What you, what you say, what you say, John, in Revelation? Bless all they that do his commandments. Now, why am I so blessed for doing the commandments of God? That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter and through the gates into the city. Now, that's the only way you're going to get in, saints. Keeping God's commandments. The fourth commandment is his Sabbath day, what he read over there. The, the feast of tabernacle in the seventh month is a high Sabbath day. Just as Passover was coming in when they had to take him off the cross because tomorrow was a high Sabbath day. All of these days were made just for us. And our children don't know nothing about them, let alone about them now. And I can see that because they're not teaching them. But the Ten Commandments, what did we, where, where did we fall off the wagon at to where we stopped teaching the children that? Uh, what, what, what did, what did that, what did, when did that happen? Like I say, let's know, let's know the feast. They, they don't even know the commandments now. Little children are super smart, much smarter than most of us, most of us that, and that we were at that age. Technology, they mastered it. Now, how in the world can you have a passcode on your phone and the child can't talk, but sometimes the way he can wiggle his fingers to figure out your passcode? How in the world is that even possible? And you hadn't got sense enough to where if you somehow forget one little thing, you had to take it back to the <laughs> directors and let them do it. Store people. We're in a bad place, eh? We're in a bad place. I want to stay with what I got here. So we just did. <laughs> Let's go to 2 Corinthians. So since this holiday here, 1776, people were liberated, people were made free. Do you know the uh, Pledge of Religion? Do you know that? Uh, yes, sir. Can I, you do it for me? Uh, I pledge allegiance right. to the flag. Come on, just do it. Open your mouth. Now, now, this is not ours. I'm just saying, I was taught this, and all of us, we had to say this, and Head Start, and, and maybe in the first grade or one of those grades, but I know that at least in Head Start mm -hmm. in kindergarten, we used to have to say this, and I think they stopped it when we got into the grade school. <laughs> now, listen, I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America. To the, to the republic, republic for, for which it stands, stand. one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, for with liberty. And for just, what now? Liberty. For liberty and justice. And for justice. For all. For who? All. It don't seem like it. It don't seem like it. And I'm not playing a white or black thing. I could care less about that. Israel, what you got, your God prayer set upon you for your ignorance. And I'm going to show you that tonight. Now, God said he told them they didn't have to be as hard as what they were on you. And I there said God going to get them for that. And Jeremiah said going to get them. But God laid them afflictions on you because of your ignorance. And I'm going to show you that tonight. I wonder how God feels. I, I want to just take time and deal with this for just a few minutes. Now, let me show you what the Spirit is. Some people, we want this so bad. And I want to show you what. Ezekiel said about it. We want it so bad. So when we're, we're, not, we're not comfortable with what God has did for us. We're always seeking for something that's deeper. 2 Corinthians 3 and 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now what, well how, how much freer can you get than that, Zaina? <laughs> Wherever the spirit of God is, there is liberty. God is a spirit, and wherever his spirit is, there is liberty. And let me tell you what the spirit is supposed to be at in you. Supposed to be at. It's supposed to be within you. And if you got it in you, it's going one of the first things it's going to tell you, Abigail, you better remember the commandments. Yes, I learned the commandments. I wonder how is it was that people like Mother Ida, Sister Jemison, and my grandmother and other mothers, some of them couldn't read and write near as good as you could, but they had sense enough to teach you the Ten Commandments. And then here it is now, we hadn't got sense enough to teach our children and our grandchildren. I wonder where that, that something fell off somewhere. 
And I wonder how God feel about it, Abigail. Do the text again. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. All right. So you want to be liberated by something else, Zaina. And God don't mind. <laughs> Listen, he don't mind. If something else can make you free, he don't just try it out. But let me show you what God said there. Give me 6 and 30 of, of, of Matthew again. 6 and 32. Pay close attention to this one, and then we're going to Ezekiel chapter 20. Pay close attention to this one. I want to give you something. I want to try to help you. As priest of the Most High God, I want to help you. And I'm not saying that you can't celebrate 4th of July next, next year. It's, it's not a pagan holiday for what I know. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Well, who, who's seeking after this, Mark? The Wayne? Gentile. The Gentile, that group of people. Now, what are they seeking after? Now, go back over there to Ezekiel chapter 20. And verse 22. And verse number 22. I'm anxious to see what he says about it. God said, you, all of us, you know, we always want to imitate and be like somebody. We're not, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not, uh, we're not uh, content with the blessed thing that God has given us. Other want to be like you. Come here, Trent. Can you take your hair off every day? Can you take it? You come here. You take it off for a minute. That's what you said. out. Take your hair off. Come here for a minute. You sit down, Trent. Bless you. I was going to mess with you tonight, but I ain't going to mess with you. Now listen, she got good hair, good great hair, but it's, it's thick and it's, it is what it is. You got a purr? No. You don't have a purr? No, you just black. Let me get it's somebody just juices and beer. I wish Jennifer was here. <laughs> she would be a good example. But listen, we're not content. We want our hair like everybody else. We want it to be straight and slick. And God said, your hair was going to be like, your hair going to be like wool this and wool that. And some of you guys are getting the better. And some of you can't help it, the guy. Some of them can't help it. Some guys, they had to keep their hair cut because they didn't have a good grade like me. They just had to keep it cut. You ever seen guy hair just roll up in like little balls? They, wasn't, they, they didn't have a thing just roll up like that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> don't mess with my little boy. Let's look at that song. <laughs> now listen to what God said. Everybody want to be like other, but they want to celebrate their holidays and do this and do that. Nevertheless. This, this is, this is, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is Israel. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in a minute. Read it. Nevertheless, I will drew mine hand in wrath for my name's sake. Verse number uh, 22. Yes, sir. That's it. Mm -hmm. What did you want? 20, you're in 20 and 22? Yes, sir. Okay. Nevertheless, I will drew my hand in wrath for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen. 20 and 22. 32, 32, 32, I'm so sorry. 32, 32. Y'all put 20, 32 on that paper. I got 22. I was in a hurry. Now listen to what God said. And that which coming into your mind. What you said, God? That which coming into your mind. God said, all that mess that come in your mind. Shall not be at all. <laughs> that ye say. Do it again. I don't know what come in their mind. Shall not be at all. God said, all of that stuff that come in your mind. Shall not be at all. It ain't going to happen at all. It ain't going to work for you. What did the world in the world that the people have in their mind? Well, what is it, huh? That ye say, we will be as the heathen. As the families of the country. God, we going to be just like the other nations. We're going to celebrate everything they celebrate, even though we don't know nothing about it. God said it ain't going to work for you. I'm going to show you why things won't work for you when you're trying to do it. And again, you won't get in there being higher than what the Spirit. Wherever the, the God is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the eternal our God is, There's there liberty. is liberty. Now, what else, what, else, what else can you give in exchange for that? Just like he asked the question here. What can you give in exchange for your soul, your body? What, you, what can you give in exchange of it? Do the text of God again. God said, all that stuff that you got in your mind said we're going to be like the other people. And that which coming into your mind shall not be at all. <laughs> that ye say we will be as the heathen, as the family of the countries to serve wood and stone. God said it ain't going to work. John 8 and 32. Give me, give, me, give me verse number 30. Verse 30. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus said the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers? Hmm. And commit 
ye whoredom after their abominations. Listen here, after their whoring, going to whoring after their God. Now go back to uh, back up to why we're here. After I bought this here, oh, back up to chapter eight. Let me do this one. There's some 31. stuff in there when there it'll make you cry. And again, I'm not pulling down Fourth to July. You, if it makes you free and spend your money on all the fireworks and all that stuff, so do it. <laughs> just, just do whatever you do. But I wonder how God feel about you doing all of that stuff, and then you don't know about any of the things that He commanded. Now there are other uh, 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 holiday, no. civil holiday that Israel celebrated, the Feast of Purim, that Esther had a feast, there was other Hanukkah, a whole lot of other holidays that they celebrated that didn't have pagan tithes. And there's nothing wrong with it. Most of you all do it every other night anyway. You go home and you celebrate by yourself. And you have a holiday. What you got? Oh, I got me a little jack in here. I got me a little deer. Yeah, that's your holiday. You do it all the time anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? You all know what I'm talking about, don't you? I've been to some of you all houses. Come on in, brother. Sit down. Okay. You want a little something? Yeah, some water. <laughs> Other places I go every time I go. You want a little something? Yes, a glass of water. Is anything wrong with that? Can't go to, go to Wang and Lord of them. House. Come on, bro. You want a little something? What's wrong with folk that? And you used to go to places how they used to. A, a child, you want a glass of tea or something? This new word, they don't. I like it now. I can't say it. <laughs> Let's go, sir. Verse six. He said, "Furthermore, unto me." Acts six and eight. Uh huh. What he say? He said, "Furthermore, unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? <laughs> Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here. What did What did the house of Israel doing? <laughs> great abominations. Uh huh." That I should go far off from my sanctuary. Now, hold on, <laughs> hold on for a minute. You mean to tell me, Sister Jemison, God is going to leave the church because you got all a whole lot of foolish stuff going on in the church? Yes, sir. What is this that you doing to make God leave the church? What in the world have you people did? Brother Mark, you ought to be shaming yourself working on the 4th of July. Man, if you know the money I made yesterday. <laughs> no, it wasn't double. It was quadruple or something. He richly blessed me. You need something, brother? <laughs> hey, name bragging. I'm not bragging. It was hot out there. <laughs> I deserve every penny. I'm <laughs> you want verse 9? Yeah, I do. And he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. What are they doing, son? So I went in and saw, and behold, now, every... Look, hey, hey, I went on in the church, and what you see, Ezekiel? Every form of creeping things, hmm. and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel, ports, portrait that was upon one portrait. In other words, I saw all kind of pictures of this, on this wall, pictures of that. Everything was in the church. So hmm. you see why God left it? That sounds for me. You see why God left the church. Let's go to where we're going on my paper. John 6, I think it is. John, John 8. John 8 and verse 32. John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What's going to make me free, my The truth. The truth of God is what's going to help me to be liberated in my life. What is the truth? Anybody know it? Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is true. 32 says. Oh, you want 32 again? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Uh -huh. And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. I, I'm a Christian, and I don't be whatever you want to be. Read on. How sayest thou ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided ever. Mm -hmm. If the son therefore shall make you free, If Christ shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. What else do you want, saints? Now you tell me, you, if you can prove to me, I can prove mine to you. If you can prove to me 
that it made you feel that good, it made you free, you might well go on back. I, when you're going back to work, going into the public building, because you tell me the thing, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And when they get down there, for liberty and for justice for all. And then when you don't get that and you're acting a fool, I'm a call ass sharpener. And the Lord and the holy angels are looking at you. And this is what Solomon said. They said, thou fool. <laughs> Let's read the text. Uh, Galatians 4. And, Galatians uh, 4 and 30. 30. Listen at this. Pay close attention to this. Nevertheless, what said the scripture? <laughs> Cast out the bond woman and her son? For the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free and woman. And I thank God. Now that's the Ishmael and his seed, the Arabians. You don't know them. They're my brothers. That was, that was our father, Abraham, uh, first uh, uh, child, see. Mm -hmm. They're the Arabians. Them are, them are your brothers and sisters, whether you know it or not. But they were the bond woman. But we didn't come through that saint. Read him, brother. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bond woman. What are we now? Not children of the bond woman. I, I, listen here. 1776 couldn't do nothing for me. What I got, Sister Jimison, a long time ago through my father, Abraham. And see, we don't, we don't know how far to take this thing back and when to look at it. What I got from then and from when my name was changed with my father, Jacob. And I can run the lineage all the way back, saints. And again, I don't, I don't knock whatever this day do for you. I don't knock that. And I don't come against it. I don't have nothing against it. But for the Christians, you all ought to know about that it go back much further than that. Because see, some of you all would be mad when it don't work for you. When you don't get a job or when you don't get this and when they don't do this and when they don't do it, you mad. And it's not a white or black thing, again. It's a God thing. God is the one that laid these things up on you, these afflictions and these burdens and this and that. Again, he told you that he told the people not to be as hard and he's going to deal with them for that. But he's the one that did that to you. Where you at? Do verse, that whole text again. Verse so two. then, brethren, we are not children of bond well, women, who are we then, son? but of the free. Now, how did I get free? Going into chapter 5 and verse number 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with, wherewith Christ had made us free. Who made me free? Christ. See, I told you. See, this go back much further than what you think. And then you're looking at, you're looking at, you, you, you're going to go to church Sunday and tomorrow. And you're going to stand in the presence of God. And I wonder how you feel. And you'll drop and you'll shout, I'm free. No more chains holding me. And you get to singing them song and God looking down at you. But God said, well, son, if that was the case, what was the need of the big celebration? <laughs> oh, Lord, that wasn't me. That was just family. Okay, well, just make sure it was family and it just wasn't you. And again, I'm not saying anything. I, people always say, well, you're always trying to take it against them. I want to help you. Now, when I learn who I am, priest of the Most High God, if I don't help you, Sister Jennifer was going over Scripture, don't you know your blood is required in my hand if I don't help you and tell you something? I read over a message the other day, woe is me if I don't preach the good news, the gospel. Where we at, brother? Uh, I got to finish that five. Uh, finish. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. All right. Now, that's all, that, that's all these holidays do, especially the pagan ones. Deuteronomy 4 and 1. And I can show you how to do it. Deuteronomy 4 and 1 says, Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments oh, uh -huh. which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live. Verse 1 says, Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel. Uh, hold now. Oh, oh, Israel. See, Brother Mark, that's not even talking about me. Listen, I told you when I started this off. It don't make no difference whether you are na native born or natural born like I am. Or if not, you got to be spiritually grafted into this thing. If you're going to make it in the kingdom, ain't nobody else except you bear the name of God. To be spiritually grafted in a native born, whom are we? You can't make it in. 
You are not healed. No, and there's no other way. And I'm just talking to you and telling you as plain as it is, saints. So give it to them again. Verse 1 says, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments, which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord right, God go, of go your fathers. Me, go back over there to uh, 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 Galatians 4 and 26. Hold your point up. We're coming right back. We just left. Hold your point there. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Which is <laughs> what, the ho, mother. What is it now? Which is the mother of us all. Who, who is your son? The mother of us all. Jerusalem from where he is free? That's uh, what from I'm saying. Above. See, if you're going to make it into God's kingdom, you going whether you native born or you're gonna have to be spiritually grafted in this thing, thing. It ain't said nothing about America gonna get you free. If in America gonna be the mother of you all, or, or none of those other countries, it don't make no difference. God have but one thing set. And if you're gonna spend it with him eter eternally, just one place you gotta do that thing. So don't come to me talking about, well, I ain't no Israelite. It don't make it, or you can be a Christian light, a Baptist light, or whatever you want to be. If you're going to be in God's kingdom, it's only one way. Give me the text again. <laughs> Go back and give me Which one? verse 1 over yonder, and then come back and give me verse 26. Deuteronomy 4 and 1. I hope I'm helping you all tonight. Yes, sir. Brother Mark, I ain't going to be able to celebrate. You do. I told you. We do it every time I come to y'all house. You, know I mean? you want something, brother? Kool-Aid. They don't do that no more. <laughs> Kool-Aid went out back in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> now, there, now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgment, which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live and go in. If you want to live and go in and possess this land that God did, I'm going to show you this land is free. Now go back over there and give me that in 26. Hold your point and we're coming right Galatians back. Galatians 4 and 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. What is it, son? Free. It's free, and who is it? Which is the mother of us all. Of us all. If you're going to make it in. You read that, we just picked the left that talking about who the born woman was and who the free woman was. Mm -hmm. The whole Bible is there, saints. Now, if you can get liberated better than that right there, if 1776 can do it, ain't nothing, like I said, it's not a pagan holiday, I don't get, but it wasn't so much for all of us. To the Christians, I don't care if you white or black on this one. Whether you're Democratic or Republican, it don't make no difference with God as it relates to this one. Hey, one thing that he had said. Now, one, this is the question that I get out walking, and he kept on asking me. So God, what, what are the title? What do I do? I wonder how God feels. You got 15 years old, and this is what the Spirit told me, and they search all things, even the deep thing. The Spirit told me the other day when I was walking, you got 15 years old, 15 year old boys and girls that can't recite three of God's Ten Commandments. But they can name every, pretty much a lot of the holiday, and that's even at five. How in the world did we get here? How did we get here? And you wonder what's going on in this world? Let me tell you something, saints. As priest of the Most High God, I want to try to forewarn you. I'm praying. I don't know what's going to do. Some of you all been on social media just like I have. When I saw, I saw storms, and I'm talking about flooding storms that are doing some terrible things in a lot of different countries. And even here in the states, in a lot of different states. And my prayer here is to God, because I want to know so I can try to warn you all. I've asked him, seem like a hundred times, Father, what is this about? And do I need to be alarm, alarm, alarming the people for here? And he hasn't said anything to me yet. But you better... Be paying attention to the things that's going on around. That's what I said. A lot of this foolishness in this world, <laughs> I could care less about it. I know that though. Where we at, son? Uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 4. Go back over there and 4 and let's finish this. Deuteronomy 4 and 4. 5. Verse 4 five. and 5. 
Well, he was talking about this liberty and, and, and what it would do. Let me, let me show you what it would do. Jerusalem from above is free, and she's the mother of us all and have made us free. Uh, 4 and 5 says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to now, possess it. God said, I, I taught you statutes and judgments, and this is what's going to make you free. Read on. Keep them for and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall all now we shall hear all these things. Listen, now some of you people may say a lot of things about me, and I heard a lot of things. I've heard this and I've heard this. But one thing you can't deny is surely <laughs> do it. Surely this great nation is a wise. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Give me, give me verse number, give me verse number uh, uh, six again. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your will. I've heard of people a lot say a lot of things about me, Miss Stacy. But one thing you can't deny is. This is your wisdom? You can't deny that from me. You can't deny. Like I said, I didn't have sense enough to give it to myself and read and train. I wasn't smart enough to. How am I able to teach and know the thing that I know? How? Where did that come from? You might call me some other things, and though it be not true, but one thing you can't deny, and all you can do is just like they did with Daniel, all you can do is just go to making up stuff. And God will get you. He'll deal with you for that. This is my wisdom and understanding. The next one. This is your wisdom and your understanding. Now listen at this. Because I know the commandments and keep the commandments. What are you doing? He's telling you the commandments? <laughs> uh, do you know? You got it. If you, don't, if, you're not, if you didn't come up here to do the commandments, get on out up here. I told you, uh, you make me bad me. I'm going to get you. Look at him, put that coat away. <laughs> Let go, son. Look at this next one here, Saint. Now, look at the next one. First seven. Sh for surely now, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who had God so near to them? Now, listen. Now, you're going to trade that in? Can you name another group of people on the face of the earth that have God as, that is as close to my God as I am? Name somebody else, Saints. Ask the question again, Marquette. For what nation is there so great who had God so near to them? Uh -huh. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon for him for. For whatever reason I call upon my God, he's that close to me. I can see this. When Elijah made the statement, it won't be any rain or dew in the land except at my word. When the man of God told the older woman, he woman, this time next year you're going to embrace a child. How can these men of God speak soup, I mean, things in the natural that are supernatural? How can they do it, Elder Duncan? Except God is as close to them as what they say. The text says again, for, what, what other group of people that have him so nigh to us as he is to us? Say? And you trade it in. Read it. And what nation is that so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law? I don't know none. Read it. Of all this law? Which I said before you this day. Uh -huh. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, uh -huh. and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Huh. But teach them thy sons. What you saying? What you, what you saying, Moses? But teach them thy sons. Teach them, teach them thy son. I want to show you. Teach these things to your son. I'm going to show you what he's telling you. And Read thy son, son. And to your son, son. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in horror. Now, listen. You remember when he stood there in horror for him? And the Bible, God come down and gave Moses the Ten Commandments on mm -hmm. that mountain. He said, and then you go back and read the next and the, and the people stood there and said, everything that God has said, we will do, we will do it and be obedient to it. Come on, give me verse 13. Let me show it. Let me see what it was that he gave him. And he declared unto you his covenant, <laughs> which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. Ten commandments. Now, and the Holy Spirit told me this week, the average 15-year-old can't recite three of them, Zaino. And if you think the Holy Spirit telling the story, you be bold enough or foolish enough to tell it. <laughs> All you got to do is test your children and grandchildren. I know they're smart with the other stuff. Even the ones that are a little bit slower, they smart. <laughs> and that's the truth. You didn't put nothing in them. Uh, Why you say that? You had to say that. 
truth. What we at? <laughs> we going to the next. Matthew 24 and verse number four. Matthew 24 and verse number four. <laughs> I'm finna get ready to close it. What time is it, brother? 10 o'clock? Woohoo, we way over time, ain't we? Doesn't appreciate you, brother. <laughs> Take your time. I, I need to cover one or two little things right here. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 4. Verse 4. 4, four, four. or 14? 4. Oh, okay, 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive What'd you. What you said, Christ Emmanuel? Take heed that no man deceive you. Don't let nobody deceive you. Let's look at what he's talking about. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 21. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. Come on, give me with that paper, and we're going to roll through these few. I got to get to one point, and then we're going to let you go. Thessalonians See, I don't, I don't want you to get into some things. The Bible is going to tell you in a few minutes. You get into certain things, and you fool around and make shipwreck. And I don't want you to do that. Read it. 5 and 21 says. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Prove everything. Everything you do, you need to prove it. Know what's about it, and hold fast to the thing that you find out that are good. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, let me show you what can happen to you. First Timothy one in verse 18. Uh huh. Now, hold fast to what's good because if you don't, Abigail, you could fool around and make shipwreck. This charge. You remember when you was in that, that wreck that last time? God was with you. He blessed you. You flew out the window. You remember that? Zaina got a pot of potato. She still got potato smell in her hair now. It's, I'm just saying, it's, it, it could be tough. Nobody want to make shipwreck, car wreck, or no kind of wreck. Amen. <laughs> Let's read him. <laughs> this charge I commit unto thee. I charge you, Bible study group of Israel. Son Timothy, according to the prophecies which be, mm -hmm. went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. All right. Read him, brother. Holding faith and a good conscience. What you say now? Holding faith and a good conscience. Uh-huh. Which some haven't put away concerning faith. Hold faith and a good conscience. Because some people put it away, Zaina. Mm -hmm. Some people didn't hold fast to the truth of God, word, Abigail. Mm -hmm. I wonder what happened to them. What happened to Have them? made shipwreck. What happened to them? Shipwreck, made shipwreck. They didn't hold fast to the word of God. Got with the Gentiles and doing a lot of them other things where God said, what you put in your mind, it ain't going to work for you no kind of way. And you fool around and you made shipwreck. Well, what you mean by that, Brother Mark? 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? <laughs> and I was going to pull that out to the number. One. Let me show you. Let me jump all the way down this way and get ready to let you go. Okay. Let me show you what it means to make shipwreck. You got something that's so good and, and important and popular in your life, and you fool around and make shipwreck. First King, First Kings, I know. First King 13. I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to try to let you go. I don't feel no way tired. I want to help you. I want to try to help you. Brother Hefter, I want to try to help the people. And then, see, this is the bad, this is the bad one about this holiday here. If one thing to, uh, we, didn't, we just done overtook it. I looked at all the other people, and they were talking about, what's the most, anybody know the most popular food on this holiday? I'm not talking about for you black people. I know. I'm going to tell you what y'all did. You know what they were saying? They was all on there. This state, this was the popular, most popular food. What's the most popular food on the 4th of July? Ribs. Huh? Ribs. Yeah, for the black people, yeah. What was it, Riri? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. <laughs> but for you people? Glizzy. What is it, Marquette? They call them glizzy. <laughs> what kind of ribs? Pork. Hidia, 97 degree, heat index 15. <laughs> a pork bologna sandwich is the last thing you need. Let's know the real. <laughs> when I say God said when it, when it ain't going to work for you, go back over there and give it to Ezekiel right quick. 20, Ezekiel 20 and 32. And 32. God said it ain't going to work. And then I'm going to read this because I don't want nobody to fool around and make shipwreck. Ezekiel 20 and verse 32. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all, that ye say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood God, and stone. God said it ain't going to work. 
You can do all you want to do. And you done messed up what they did. On news, they got it in this state, this, this hot dog, and Arkansas turkey hot dog, and this other one, this kind of hot dog. But get right here where y'all at. The number one thing y'all put in. So the poor people over here, what's the name of the Big Star, the old store? What's the name of them? Big Star? Big Star. Took all of their ribs and all that stuff, and they wasn't beef ribs. Poor folk, they run in there. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Let me go back and give you this for somebody food around and make shipwreck, and then we're going to let you go. First King 13 and 1. Read it quickly. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord. All right, here come a man of God by the word of God. And to Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Now, he wasn't that man of God, all right? He doing some more other stuff. He didn't have no benefit doing on some holiday that he ordained and made a holiday just like the feast of the Lord. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus said the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burnt <laughs> What are you going to offer, my quack? That burn incense. Hey, now, what shall he offer? What or who? I'll offer the priests of the offer high places. The priests of the high places. He gonna get these old false prophets. In other words, get them, get them, God, get them. Read on. He sh shall offer. Shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. <laughs> now and, listen here. He told, and men gonna be burnt up on that old altar that y'all doing. All that stuff you doing at church. That's pretty bad. They gonna die. In other words. And, 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 and this was the man of God that come in there and he said, this is the sign that it's going to happen. Read it, verse 3. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. It's going to be split in two, and the ashes are going to be poured out. Verse 4 says, And it came to pass when, Jerob when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God. When he heard the man of God preaching these things, hey, brother, you can't tell him, we can't celebrate. You know, I can tell you, you don't have to listen. Now, this is the same thing Jehovah did. That man of God was preaching against that stuff they were doing. And look what happened here. I want you to pay close attention to this now. Which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again. Sister to Jefferson, him. they got mad at what the man of God was preaching because they told him they couldn't celebrate them praying, them pagan holiday. And as soon as he did, he scratched out his hand, gonna get the man of God, and his hand would begin to wither up on him. The man of God was preaching against these pagan days. And that man got mad because he had his own preachers. He scratched out his hand, going to get the man of God, and his hand withered up. You never know who you're going to need. <laughs> read, read it. What verse is Verse 5. Verse 5 says, The altar was rent. The altar also was rent. And the ashes poured out from the altar. It according, happened just like the man of God. See it according? According to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. <laughs> now listen at the man who hand withered, going to get the man of God. Read, look at what he said. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me. Please pray for me. That my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again. That Deuteronomy chapter 4, round about verse 7 said, What God is, is so near to him that for whatever reason I call out, even if I call out on him for somebody that's wicked, that have did wicked to me. Mm -hmm. Read him, brother. And the king's hand was restored him again and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself and I will give thee a come reward. On. I'm going to give you a reward. Come on, come on home to me. You didn't, you didn't heal me. Come on, king, man of God. What did the man of God say? And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee. Hmm. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this I place. I don't want nothing you got. That's what I told you. This world don't have nothing to offer me. Hallelujah. Nothing. I'm well said. I can go and, well, we'll get into that later. For so was it charged by the word of the Lord, What'd saying, you say? For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water. I already water. know how God feels about certain things, and that's why I can't get into it. Now, God had charged this man to God, said, Don't eat nothing and don't drink nothing, and the way you came in, don't go back that way. Read on. 
nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to mm -hmm. Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. Who, who, who was over there? An old prophet in Bethel. Mm -hmm. And his sons came. Now and God had told this man of God, don't eat nothing and don't drink nothing. The way you come in, don't come that way. Go out another way. Now here come an old prophet come in. Read it, brother. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. And them they told also to their father. Mm. And their father said unto them, What way went he? Listen here. If you a prophet too, why you got to ask your son what way he go? Let the spirit tell you which way he went. <laughs> See, that's what so people, that's what we do in church. First thing that somebody, you, they call you up in the prayer line. They can see everything, and the first thing, they go asking you questions. If you a prophet and you see all of this stuff, and God, you tell me, don't ask me nothing. <laughs> Read it, brother. For his sons had seen that way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rolled thereon, and went after the man of God and found him sitting on an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that came is from Judah? Listen, why are you asking me that? If you are a prophet, you're supposed to know who I am. Read it. And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in why, this place. Why come, Marquette? Read it. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, uh -huh. Thou shalt not eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that now, thou listen, camest. You got to be careful who you listen to, Abigail. You fool around and listen to somebody that's doing something outside of God's word, and it'll make you make shipwreck. That's the whole thing I want to stop you from doing, making shipwreck. All right? Here this old man here said, I'm a prophet too. Read it. Verse number 18 said. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And the angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord Anytime saying. Anytime anybody ever go to telling you that foolishness, you run from them. Run from him, read it. Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. God told him not to do it, but he let some old prophet tell him to go against the word of God. Because he was old, an old fool. And he tricked you. He lied. I'm going to see if this man or this young man made shipwreck. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus said the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not what, what, did, he, they, what did he obey? The mouth That's of the Lord. I, told you, I wonder how God feel about all these things. I wonder how do he... Where the spirit of the Lord is, that is liberty. He whom the Lord set free is free indeed. I wonder how he feel about it. Read him, brother. Thus said the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee. He didn't keep what, Mark? Where? The commandment. He didn't keep the commandments of God and the command that God gave him either. Read him. But came his back and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which the Lord did say to thee, eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. You ain't going to get a decent burial, young man. If this ain't bad, I don't know what it is. Read him, brother. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. Mm -hmm. And his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the land is standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Now, how do you know? He, now, now all of a sudden this man of God then got revelation. <laughs> you know what he made? Go back over there and give it to me. That's Timothy. First, First Timothy, Timothy 1 and 19. 19. You know what he made, Abigail? A man of God, young man. 
A man stretched forth his hand, and hand withered, he prayed for him, and it come back. And then all because he hold in faith. faith. Read it. What you say? Hold in faith. Hold in a, faith. In a good country. Uh -huh. With some having put away. Some people put that away. They didn't want God's way. They put it away. Concerning faith have made shipwreck. You see what happened to that man? I had many other examples to give you tonight. But since it's 1030. And it ain't because I'm tired and sleepy. I'll let you all go. Not because I want to. I miss you all. I hadn't saw you, Sister Jimerson. I miss you. And I hate to let y'all go. <laughs> if I let you go, you got to give me one. Or y'all got to come back tomorrow. Y'all come back tomorrow if I let you go? <laughs> we preach it. Mother Charlotte, we love you. God bless you. Brother Jatavian, bless you, brother. Sister Tiffany Reed, God bless you. Our sister praying for you. Michael and Tony. Uh, bless you all. Sister Payne, bless you all. The, the brother and sister, bless you. Mother Fanny B, to my other brother, Brother Char, God bless you. Our sister, Sister Emma, God bless you. Brother Jalen, Dr. Moore, God bless you. Miss you all. Gigi Gray, God bless you, our sister. Uh, Miss Thompson, God bless you, sister. Sister Carmona, Sister Alina, Alina, bless you, our sister. Brother Hefner, God bless you, my brother. Uh, look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Sister Hall, uh, Sister Flora Hallman, God bless your sister. Brother Joel Hope, bless your brother. Sister uh, Vonda Pittman, our sister, bless you. Bless you, bless you to all my preacher brothers and sisters. God bless each of you all. Sister uh, Danette, Nickerberry, all of y'all. Truly, I thank God for all of our viewers on tonight. Listen, again, um, as priest of the most, I God, I want to help you. This holiday is not so much as a bad one. But everything is not for you. There's certain things that God have did for us. And we don't want to, as if we're in sudden him, uh, 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 um, not acknowledging and accepting the things that he have done for us. We don't want him to think that we feel that way. And when that, that phrase come to my mind this week, I was walking, and the Spirit just said, uh, how... I wonder how God feel about it. And when I said people have come from far and near to do all of these things and then the things that God have commanded do. And, and one of the things that really stuck, that just really saddened me, when the Spirit told me that the average 15 year old can't recite three commandments, and I went to thinking, I, went, I, even, I thought I was thinking in my family. I thought among some of them. And all I could do, and I was just God knows honest, well, I don't know. I don't know if they can or not. And it's sad. The thing that we got in Sunday school before we could, some of us could even read and write, it's just like poems. We had, they, we had did them so to rememorize them. And they can't not even three of them, the Spirit said. And that's sad, that's sad. Come on, stand to your feet, Bible study group of Israel. We bless God for you. Again, to all of you all this realness, we love you. We appreciate you. We bless God for you. Listen, our young ladies and young men are going to be up tomorrow. Uh, uh, so please come and listen to the word that God has blessed them. They've had this. For, some of them had it for six weeks. Their message has been for six, me, six weeks, and they're just ready to preach. Zaina, what happened to your word? You didn't get your Move your big old head out of the way, Abigail. What happened to your word? Spirit wasn't dealing with you? Huh? Don't worry about it. It didn't, it didn't your mama either. She had one, the spirit didn't, it didn't deal with her either. So don't worry about it. So I'm going to help you, though. I'm going to help you because I love you. I help you. Come on. You, you working on something for us, seriously? In the process? All right. All right. What about you, Riri? You were, you're still reading, doing your schoolwork, trying to get through summer school? All right. All right. We bless God for you. We love you. To all of our mothers is with us, uh, Lady Duncan, Lady Jimerson, God bless each of you all. To all our sisters, to my elder brother, God bless you. With uplifted hands, I speak and release the blessings of God over you in this place on tonight. And to, even to all of the beings, the blessings of God be over you. He's feeding you with the heritage of Jacob and allowing you to ride on the high places of this work. Of work, the mouth of the eternal our God has spoken. I speak and release what He has spoken into your life. Three blasts, my brother. What up, lift hand.
Amen. 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 Amen.